Dr. House, wait! Good shot, Dr. House. Dr. House, look out! I got you, Dr. House. If you've ever been given ibuprofen for a serious injury, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. Like and comment. The comment section is kind of tame. What gives? Get in there, make it a little crazy. Hey guys, the biggest sponsor of this channel is of course Brownells. A big thank you to them, they are very based. And of course, the sponsor for this particular video is Manscaped. And we'll talk more about them later other than to say that you should do personal grooming. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and may often forgotten, but most certainly not by me, M855A1, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about a pretty incredible rifle, to be honest. And we have the Knight's Armament SR15 Mod 2. So before we get into it, it's gonna be important to do our full disclosure. So what is my relationship with the company? Um, all that goodness. So it should be noted that Knight's Armament did provide this rifle for this review. And I have previously um, done a review on the Knight's Armament SR16, which I did purchase. Now this particular rifle is provided to me by Knight's Armament. Now I also need to disclose that I also am close friends with two of the employees who work there, one that I've known for a long time, one that I more recently met. So I wanna go ahead and put that out there as well. That being said, I have used Knight's rifles for a long time, um, both in the civilian world and a little bit in the professional side. The ammunition is provided for by Norma Ammunition, 4,000 rounds. A big thank you to them. They are our ammo sponsor. Now, despite all my relationships in the industry, uh, in this case with CAC, I have no problem pulling punches and um, saying it like it is. Uh, I've done that in multiple videos. So I will be as neutral as possible as I always am when I review anything, just so you guys are aware. But it's important to me that I do those full disclosures so that you guys know precisely um, everything that's kind of going into this on the back end. Now, with this particular rifle, we've... God, Micah, how many rounds, how long have we been using this thing? Too long and too many rounds. I know. I, I can't tell you. This particular one has just been, uh, we shot so much, man. Um, it's been shot both when it was, uh, before it was painted. Now that's painted, you can see we've shot it quite a bit as well. It's been in multiple videos. Um, it's kind of the basis of a lot of our recce videos. So, I, you know, I just want to point out right off the bat, um, when it comes to a fighting rifle, uh, there are a couple really good companies, uh, guys like HK, LMT, Knight's Armament. So before we start, when it comes to the Knight's Armament, um, this is going to be a lot of future videos as well. I think without a doubt, there's a lot of really high quality manufacturers out, th out there of AR type rifles. We have uh, HK with the 416, we have LMT with their series, and then we have the Knight's Armament. And without a doubt, the Knight's Armament stands as among one of the finest fighting rifles to have at this point ever been built, uh, as far as a general, pr general purpose rifle in 5.56. Just starting that off with that. Um, but the question is, you know, what makes this what it is and, and all that goodness? And a bigger question is, is this still an AR-15? So when it comes down to it, the AR-15 was at its time a really good rifle and has been refined to be a very fine rifle and perhaps uh, one of the finest rifles to have ever been fielded by professional militaries in the history of mankind so far, along with the AKM and a couple other rifles out there. And in my mind, the AR-15 has kind of seen some, we've seen a lot of faults. The AR-15 has been used quite extensively. So there are a couple companies that have made derivatives of the AR-15 that solve some of those problems. Those companies are Heckler & Koch with their 416, LMT with their enhanced bolt carriers and their enhanced designs, and then CAC with some of the corrections that they made to the AR-15 system. So today we're gonna to talk about those changes that they made, why they make this such an excellent rifle, and why you might choose one or the other and kind of what you're looking at here. But in any case, without further ado, let's get into this gun. We're gonna do what always works and what makes my Navy guys super excited and, which, and what kind of nauseates my Marines, but they're still into it when drunk, tip to butt. Let's get into it. So the Knight's Armament is a gas-operated magazine-fed rifle in 5.56. So there are, of course, other variants, but for the SR-15, this is a 5.56 rifle. Now, starting all the way out here at the muzzle, we have a couple things going on here. So we have... How many rounds have you put through that suppressor? Oh, shit, I didn't think about that. Uh, Dude, I 100% was going to say, do you want to cut? Because <laughs> you thought it was going to stick? Yeah, so that was actually kind of cool. Um, so 
typically you have suppressor stick. Um, due to the design of these suppressors, and I don't mean to get into the suppressors already, but it begs the question, um, they, uh, they crank off very easily. Whew. And uh, in this case, this one has had probably about 4,000 rounds since I've taken it off, and it, as you saw, it just came off like nothing right there. No, that wasn't planned. So that's kind of cool. Uh, really good design. We'll talk about that in a second. But Mike, if you want to come in here and take a look at this muzzle device. So to start off with, we do have a three prong muzzle device. Now it should be noted that a three prong is nothing new. They've been used since both the inception of the AR-15 and the M16, uh, all the way through Surefire and far before the AR-15 ever came about, people realized that three prong flash hiders were really good. Now, what makes the three prong from Knight's Armament so good is that a lot of them have a really terrible time with a ring. And that's due to the fact that they're all equal. So what happens is when you fire, that muzzle device will just ring very loudly. Now you don't have that with the Knight's Armament. Another thing to look at that's really good with the Knight's Armament three prong is the way the suppressor mounts up. As you can see on the inside of the suppressor, I hope you guys can see it. Mike, do you have a good shot yeah, of that? These little ball bearings, you guys see those? So those mount up to the system right here, and that's what prevents it from locking up. And then you have this indexing tab right here that lets you know to line those up. So when I go to mount that suppressor, I get that tab right on, and then I simply crank down on those ball bearings, and that's how we get the suppressor mounted. So even without a suppressor on the gun, the gun runs, as we almost lose our suppressor, runs very well. Now, with the complete system together with the QDC suppressor, it's even better. So this is, of course, a very short suppressor, and it should be noted that we actually have a video showcasing the performance of the three prong from Knight's Armament in low light conditions, and it's pretty freaking good. But along with this very short baffle technology, which is very well made, this is among one of my favorite suppressors ever made, um, you have completely eliminated flash. Another thing to look at too with the suppressor, if you wanna come in a little closer here so they can see some detail on it. As you can see right here, we have a lot of surface area. This allows the suppressor to cool off very rapidly, even under rapid fire. So what you have is you have a sound suppressor that isn't really here to modulate sound so much, it will do it, but rather the main goal with this is to make sure that flash is completely eliminated and for CQB teams where it's gonna take a little bit of that edge off. Now, when you're using this on a 14.5 gun, like what we have right here, the sound modulation is pretty good and it's actually not that bad to fire without ear pro. So when you're working in the mountains and in some type of recce, in some type of recce roll, this suppressor is really awesome. And I can't say enough good things about what they've done at the end of this weapon. Now, from there, it's also quite lightweight. Man, I love the suppressor. Um, another thing to note about the suppressor is, depending on your material used, you might have a lot of suppressor glow under night vision. This is very common with cheaper cans or a couple different materials. You don't have that with the Knight's Armament. It's quite good. Extremely well made. This Surefire Dead Arrow, these cans are performing extremely well. Um, this would definitely edge it out as among my favorite cans. Now going back from there, another thing that is really important when it comes to a weapon is going to be the heart of the weapon, the barrel. Some would argue the bolt carry, bolt carry group, but for me it's the barrel. <laughs> and when it comes to the barrel, I thought this was going to be a negative because um, I hadn't researched it before, but the barrel is quite, quite honestly phenomenal. Um, it is a cold hammer forged barrel, which is uh, precisely what you want with a hard use barrel. They are just, they're excellent. They have excellent longevity. So this barrel both has excellent longevity as well as being chrome lined. Now typically chrome lining makes it so that weapons aren't quite as accurate. And that's just due to the way the chrome lining process works and some of the impurities and imperfections you have uh, down the bore of the barrel. But Knight's Armament has done some type of hocus pocus. Maybe they made a deal with a mage or a warlock somewhere. And for whatever reason, these barrels will hold sub MOA all day long. There's a really good review out there not too long ago where a guy fired uh, 20,000 rounds through an SR-15 over a couple months. Uh, at the end of it, he checked his group before and after, and his group was still sub MOA to MOA um, at 100 yards, which is... It's pretty incredible. These are extremely well-made barrels. And uh, I can say without a doubt that when it comes to these barrels, as long as you have the correct ammunition to push that accuracy, that the weapon will likely outshoot you and also whoever you're shooting at. Now, of course, a thing about it is that when you need to change out these barrels, it, it's not something that you can do by yourself, really, unless you have all the Knight's Armament tools and you're an armorer and you know what you're doing, you have a Knight's barrel because they are proprietary. And that is one of the things that does kind of count against the SR-15 is all proprietary. 
That being said, uh, how often are you gonna need to change out stuff? Not that often at all. Now that brings us to the gas system. And now there are so many misconceptions when it comes to gas systems on, on AR-15s and all that kind of stuff. The most common adage that I hear that is a little nonsensical to me is if it can't eat steel, it doesn't deserve brass. So I'm gonna to explain to you why that doesn't make any sense. Steel-cased ammo typically is cheaper ammunition and also has less powder charge. Uh, it is underpowered ammunition. This is very common of steel ammunition. So because of that, in order to make steel run through a weapon, let's say like a Knight's Armament SR-15, you have to open up the gas port to allow more gas into the weapon in general. So at that point, steel will run. Now, if after opening up the gas port, I then go to run full powered M855A1 and go to shoot it through this weapon, that weapon is gonna be horrifically overgassed, which can cause a ton of issues um, that we're not gonna go into at this point, other than to say that it's gonna massively overgas your weapon. So a lot of manufacturers for a long time, like Daniel Defense, massively overgas their weapons because everyone was angry and they're like, hey, my gun doesn't run steel, your gun's a piece of shit. It couldn't be further from the truth. So you have to realize, and this is probably one of the, one of the few negatives about the SR-15 is that the SR-15 is a rich bitch and she deserves good ammunition. She is combat gassed for combat ammunition. So if you use underpowered steel ammunition, you will likely have trouble with your SR-15. It might run, I'm sure some guys will be out there and they'll hop in and say, well, I changed out the buffer spring or maybe the same one and it works. That's fine, just be aware that the Knight's Armament SR-15 is designed to work with full power military type ammunition. And where it really shines is that the gas settings with full power military ammunition are phenomenal. So what's good about the SR-15? You can kind of see it here. Well, Micah come in here and try to give you guys a look. Now, hopefully you can kind of see into that gas system. It's a very interesting system. So compared to a typical AR-15 where the carbon will eventually bake in and lock all the gas into place, out of the factory, this is a completely sealed gas system, not just the gas block, but as well as the gas tube. It is a, three, it is a full seal so that when it comes to the factory, it is precisely gassed to work perfect with duty type ammunition. This is something you can't say about a lot of weapons. So typically with guns, when you're firing them, you're gonna see a ton of gas leakage out here. So especially if, for my guys who are firing modern grips with their hands out when they're firing the weapon, You'll, you'll, your hand will just get baked, right? You'll be covered in carbon. You really don't see that from the SR-15. It is very well gassed. And again, with the suppressor on there, specifically a Knight's suppressor, is all designed to work together to be gassed perfectly. I haven't really, I've noticed very little pressure increase, which is very odd to me because it's, it's still a suppressor. I suppose that's due to the length of the suppressor, but we do, really don't run into any gas issues. I haven't really noticed um, too many issues with running a, running a suppressor on this gun. Hey guys, I missed you there. You know, this video is sponsored by Manscaped. We want to give a big thank you to them, very base of them for doing that. Now, I'm not saying that you have to groom yourself or that you don't have to groom yourself, but what I am saying is if you are looking to groom yourself, you really can't go wrong with Manscaped. You know, I've actually used Manscaped for quite a while. In fact, before they ever sponsored us, so when they were like, do you want to show Manscaped on your channel? Well, absolutely. Now, what's cool about the Manscaped trimmers and all their products in general is that they are safe and they're made to be used everywhere. So whatever you want to shave or do you want to take care of, they make a product for it. So right here we have the Lawnmower 4.0. I like this thing quite a bit for a couple reasons. One, it's waterproof so you can use it in the shower. Two, it wirelessly charges. And three, it just generally looks pretty good. Now beyond that, there are a couple other great products that we want to talk about. Those hair trimmers. You guys are out there. You got some nose hairs that stick out and get them taken care of. This is a sick little product. And to be clear, Christmas is coming up and these make an awesome, awesome gift, especially with the performance package by Manscaped. So let's talk about a couple things here. One, if you want to make it worth it for me, use discount code THUMB20. Both gives you free shipping as well as a couple little gifts there and it's pretty based. Now besides the below the waist trim, there are a couple other products such as the Shears 2.0 to take care of all those different things that you'll have out there. So, if you have that friend, you don't know where to get them, or if you're the wife and you're somehow on my channel and you wandered here, I'm sorry, but these make awesome gifts. So get in there, and I'm gonna tell you guys right now. Go down in the description, click the link, use the discount code, THUMB20. So don't wait, go to manscaped.com, use discount code THUMB20, 20% off, 
a little free gift for you guys. Go check them out. A big thank you to Manscaped. They rock. Let's get back to the SR15. So they've done a phenomenal job. Now, in addition to that, one thing that's very interesting about the gas system is that compared to the Air 15, the SR15 has a straight gas tube. And that allows for less heat buildup at those kinks and just eliminates another potential problem when it comes to the AR-15 system. So really good there. Maybe I'm biased, I don't know. I, I love this rifle quite a bit. It is without a doubt my go-to rifle. Now, coming to the rail, um, the rails have changed a lot with the Knight's Armament system. So we have the URX-4 right here. It's an M-lock rail on all sides, extremely well built, staggered, cools off very well, is a great size, feels great in the hand, um, has QD slots on either side right here on the rail. And uh, yeah, it's everything you could possibly want. I don't personally use QDs, but if you want them, they're good there. Uh, I have zero problems with the rail. Uh, it, is, it is great. Uh, it's enough to hold zero. Um, it's not th so thin that you lose at zero with these rails. So they have done an excellent job with it. I, I don't really have any negatives for it. The upper receiver, not a whole lot of differences there. And where the differences really come into play is in the bolt and the bolt carrier system. So we will go ahead and we will talk about those right now because this is where the system gets really interesting. So there are weak points on AR-15 bolts, without a doubt. It's, every system has a weak point. Now, in the case of the SR-15, they have done a lot to try to alleviate those problems before they come into play. So for me, uh, on a lot of guns, I've broken these bolt lugs all the time, right? It just happens to me. It's one of the weak points of the weapon. So what's done on the SR-15 is they are rounded. That's relieving a possible point that could break. So it just allows for greater longevity when it comes to the bolt. In addition to that, we also have an enlarged bolt face. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this guy down. It's kind of dirty because I've been shooting it, but I recently cleaned it. Let me get around. Go ahead and take this guy apart and hopefully I don't lose anything because then this review is just over at that point. This is not an ideal surface for doing this. So you can see here we have um, those rounded lugs right there and that helps with them not snapping inside the chamber when you're firing. You can see it's pretty dirty. I've been firing the suppress. In addition to that, we have a different type of extractor. So the extractor has a dual spring system. This allows for if one of the springs fails, this weapon is going to continue to function. Just again, helps the longevity and like the fail saves. This weapon is just going to run no matter what. Another thing to look at is the firing pin. It's thinner than your typical AR-15 firing pin. And you also notice on the cam pin, that is also thinner as well. What this leads to is they're able to increase the thickness right here. We have a thicker bolt web right here, which is another common breaking point on the AR-15 bolt. Uh, I've seen that plenty of times as well. So small, it might seem like small upgrades, but these are things that lead to greater life on the overall system. So you have to realize that you have to combine this with everything else going at the SR-15. You have a very, very reliable system. So that's what they've done with the Bolt. Uh, again, LMT has made very similar upgrades in many ways. Um, I don't know that one is uh, better than the other, other than to say that uh, they both have really good design. And again, if I can relate that back, right? This Bolt design comes back to like that 20K torture test, and this has been done multiple times um, on the SR-15 where it just continues to perform despite whatever's happening. It is a phenomenal design. I sound super biased, but I get it guys. Like. You could put together a really good gun, right? You can put together a really good gun um, for probably less money. But what you're not getting is you're not getting all the fine details that you see in this entire system working together. And I think that's what you're missing here. And you certainly do pay a premium for that. The Knight's Armament SR-15 is a very expensive rifle. And even more frustrating is that um, they're kind of rare. They're kind of hard to get your hands on. So I do understand that. And I don't mean to... to to make this like a gatekeeping thing where if you don't have it, it, you know, everything's over. I'm just pointing out that this is a really good rifle. It's among the best made. Um, LMT is quite good as well. And you can build a really good weapon. Like I said before, you're just missing that very fine detail that you get in the way everything is balanced out the gate from the Knight's Armament SR-15. It's a quick note there. Now, when it comes to the lower, it's a pretty standard. There's a really not whole, a whole lot going down. Uh, now, when it comes to the lower, there's not really a whole lot going on there. So you can see right here, uh, you have your standard magazine well. Now, what is different from other weapons is that you do have ambi controls uh, to a point, you have to understand. So what I mean by that 
is compared to like the LMT, which does have the ability to lock the bolt back, you don't have that with the Knight's Armament SR15. So if I wanna lock the bolt back, I still have to do it in the traditional way. I have to pull it back, depress, and then I can lock it back. Now, you can bolt release right here, but you're not gonna be able to lock it back. We of course have our magazine release. On the other side right here, we have a magazine release. So for all my lefties out there, this is a pretty good rifle. Um, LMT might be superior in some ways, but the SR15 is still quite good. And then we have normal controls. Now, of course, your safety is ambidextrous as well. Now, when it comes to safety, so the problem I've always had with a lot of ambi safeties is I have a tendency that when I push it into fire, that that safety will bump into my hand. So what they've done on the SR15, you can see it right here, they've actually taken away material right there um, so that it doesn't interfere with your hand as much. Now, I still find it does, but I do appreciate a ambi safety because I still, when I'm firing really long shots, I like to be able to same side my safety. Um, the grip, of course, is your standard AR-15 grip. A lot of people are angry about that. Whatever, swap it out. I really have no problem with grips. After talking to Tony Cowden about it, he told me to not be a bitch. I was probably being a bitch about grips, so I really don't give a fuck anymore. So grip right there. Now, when it comes to the trigger, the Knight's Armament trigger is a two-stage, 4.5-pound trigger, and it's really good, to be honest. And it's much better than what you get from LMT right out the gate. Um, it's much more of a, it has a very, very much so a Geisley SSAE feel. So let's go ahead and try that trigger together. All right, so we have a little bit of play to hit that first stage. And we're at our wall. We have maybe a three pound let off. Total four pounds. Again, a little play. That's a really good trigger. Okay, feel the reset. Just right there. This is a fast trigger, guys. It is a really good trigger. One thing that's always pissed me off when it comes to guns is like when I buy a Daniel Defense or a um, even an LMT, I do want them to have better triggers. Uh, you don't have like a, a really good trigger. I feel like you should have like a Geisley-ish trigger um, out of the factory if you're paying for a gun that costs more than $2,000. So I really appreciate that you get that from Knight's Armament. Now going back from there, charging handle, Knight's Armament. It's good, it's not ambi. Get an ambi one if you need to. That could probably be a con if you're a left-handed shooter. We do have QD point right here at the back. And then of course we have the buffer assembly. Now the buffer assembly is specific to CAC. It is for this entire gas system. You can of course use your own springs, make everything work just as a quick note. But um, I like this entire system together. The butt socket that came with this Magpul, didn't like it. Swap it out for a BCM. BCM looks a little confused on this build, but I like it. So I'm gonna keep it on there. So that's what we have for this particular gun. A couple other notes, because I know that you guys will ask, but what do I got on this? So I have a Surefire Vampire. We have a LE5 Charlie UHP. We have a Surefire pressure pad right there. Going back, we have a Night Force Attacker 1 to 8 and a Badger Ordnance uh, mount with a top mounted RMR. We also have Tenebrex scope caps on here, as well as a Tenebrex ARD anti-reflection device. And that is the general setup on this. It should also be noted that the Knight's guns do come with iron sights and the Knight's iron sights are phenomenal, among the best out there. Now I wanna be clear guys, there is nothing wrong with your BCMs, with your Radians, with Noveskis, the Rolls are all phenomenal, phenomenal rifles. And by me saying this is among the best isn't in any way invalidating those rifles at all. This is merely pointing out that this is probably among the pinnacle when it comes to a fighting rifle. So don't, don't think that in any way I'm, I'm saying that if you don't have this, that it's not good or that a Noveski or a Radian or any of those aren't good or a built rifle, because those can be really good as well. I'm just pointing that out how excellent this particular rifle is and how good of a job they did putting everything together on it and making a professional general purpose fighting rifle. Um, again, this is my go-to. This is the rifle I have set up for everything. This is it for me. So we have the Knight's Armament SR15, guys. But here's the thing. If I don't train, this gun's not going to do me any good. I'm still going to suck with it, guys. You have always and will always be the weapon. Armed Americans, dangerous Americans, that dangerous farmer is an American tradition. Make sure that you train. These are tools, and they are very necessary. But never forget that you are the ultimate weapon. All right, guys, I appreciate you very much. Thank you for watching. A lot of really cool stuff coming up. Take care, guys. We got nothing else for you. Final note for you guys. Holidays are coming up. 
you know what? A lot of people have fallen some tough times, guys. What I want you to do, maybe reach out to some friends. Maybe somebody doesn't have their family, has a bad relationship with their family or whatever. And you know what? You reaching out, inviting them out for a little bit of holiday cheer could make all the difference in these people's lives. So get out there. Invite a friend in. Uh, just be a good neighbor. Be a good friend. That's what I've always stressed, guys. Continue to do that. Continue to build communities because that's what men and women like us do. Thank you, guys. Take care.